Good morning, folks. The quake watch hits. After more than two months with less than one six magnitude quake per week, we've now got our third in a week, second in the 24-hour span, as the West Pacific rumble we expected came in the afternoon. Additionally, a submarine volcano began erupting in the area as well. For those confused as to NASA's timing on reporting the interplanetary dust that carries water and organic material to the planets, yes, it's the same Hawaii discovery we reported 10 days ago. It does not stop at our solar system. And it took NASA three days longer to write this article than it took for me to add this to the Starwater finale and release it on the website. Interesting image release from the NRAO using their very large array, showing stellar formation in M82, the top recommendation. Coming to the ESA where they've got a good video and article describing some of the diminishing ice coverage in the Arctic, polar opposite of the Antarctic ice conditions, pun intended. Let's update the starfish situation. Some areas are seeing 95% mortality. We see these types of seasonal die-offs, but this is a bad one. Is anything sticking out to you here? The warm water issue is only about half the starfish and half the proliferation of the pathogens in warmer waters. And where is this year's die-off taking place? The same place just east of where the stuck lows in the Pacific have driven heat into areas not expecting it. Alaska still shattering dozens of heat records. The situation does remain with that pressure, may stay there a while as well. Meanwhile, out east, we are watching a double system pull through. Some areas got lucky, like me, but my folks once stayed over were forecast a foot of snow. Drive safely. Coming to Europe, the convergence causing troubles easily visible heading for the ropes and tags in his partner to the southeast quick. The quick shift leaves us with a reinforcing system that is going to cause major wind, storm surges, and possible flooding. As we eye the cloud water, I think the flooding may be a little more than possible. Kiwis dodging cloud convergence with water dropping in isolated bursts in northern Australia. Do have another system of tropical development to the northeast, but these are initially expected to head out further to the northeast. Solar wind here. Speed going down. Density not major, but above average and variable. We don't have geomagnetic disturbances, and unless something unexpected happens, we are calm or subtly perturbed at worst. Sunspot groups have entered the departing half of the Earth-facing disk. The northern group with a power move to consolidate its larger spread into a more confined magnetic mix. The beast down south still has the bipolar umbra, which is definitively an aesthetic wonder only. The delta class is epic, but quiet for the time being, and as of now, that's a good thing. After the M5 flare a bit ago, the earth tossed its magnetic connection over onto that mega spot. Every jostle and tick is now in the crosshairs of my focus as polar radiation conditions are ripe for a major event. Solar polarity update. You remember the ongoing hypothesis, starting to look a bit more than that actually, but using visualization conceived by myself in G. Puente de la Vega, we've also made an easier one for you to see here. This is on the earthquakes page of our website, and we're going to focus in on the latest data for the update. It appears Red South may reverse one more time coming up, but that Blue North may be heading down. Problem is, that's where those poles were all last cycle they still need to flip. Blue must end up on top and while red is on the right side right now, it's going the wrong way. The solar polar reversal is definitively not complete as at least one more reversal remains. Speaking of the M5 a bit ago, there was no big CME, although some minor ejecta may be in play. We'll keep watch for more earthquakes and flaring as the conditions for both are excellent. Eyes open. No fear. 6.20 a.m. Eastern Time and that's the news. Be safe everyone.